everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Zee Garcia, hello, hello. Oh, I don't have the bell on anymore. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas shopping time, and we are here to talk about a very important category of games, and that's stocking stuffers. Oh, yes. Now, we're trying to talk about some games, you know, whether they're new or whether they're old. We're trying to pick games that are in print, or at least you can find. Check out our sponsor, Cool Stuff Games, to find out more about these. Stocking stuffer, we essentially mean small games. Please do not grab a stocking and these games and then see if it fits in or not. We think for the most part these will fit in big stockings. That should work. Yeah. All I right. Think, I think so. Or they're just small games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of small games, I'm my just number being one. <laughs> my number one is Tides of Madness. Oh! A follow up to Tides of Time. And this is a two player drafting game with, of course, now a Cthulhu theme on top of that. Very simple, grab some cards, draft them in front of you, try to score the most points at the end of the game, or in this new version, try to be uh, not insane. Because if you go insane, you lose the game and the next per the other player wins. Two players only, tiny little box, very much recommended, Tides of Madness. My first pick for this category is a game called Hanami Koji. Now this is a new Ooh, game a that just name came for a small out game. this uh, this past month, really, it, at Essen, came out a little bit before that, but it was wide released at Essen, I guess you could say, kind of. They sold out. They only had like uh, like uh, 500 copies or something like that. But they all sold out. Quick Simple Fun Games is picking it up here in America, and they will be distributing it here. Definitely need to give this a try. It's a two-player card game where you have three, uh, I'm sorry, four different actions that you can do on your turn. Your opponent has the same four actions, and they will be doing the same four actions that you will. The thing is, is that you have to pick when is best and what cards is best. You're looking for uh, new entertainers to come to your theater house and do their performances at your place rather than your opponents because they'll bring you more money and them less money. And so that's the whole point of the game. You're trying to uh, get these uh, almost like... Um, uh, not majority, but it's kind of like that one game that you love that I hate, Lost Cities, where you're putting a number of cards on your side of the table, and as long as you have the higher number than your opponent, then you have control over that entertainer. Really cool Japanese-themed game, uh, beautiful artwork, very cerebral, but very tension-filled as well. Hanami Koji, go check it out. All right. Have you ever been in that situation where there's a ticking time bomb in the room and you need to stop it? No. Just yesterday. <laughs> We're board gamers, you monster. <laughs> okay. Well, Fuse is a game. It's a 10-minute game. And essentially, in this game, that's what you're trying to do. Although you're trying to stop a lot of bombs. Apparently, there's, like, ticking bombs everywhere. <laughs> and so you're, you're rolling dice and doing different actions. Put these dice on cards and defuse those bombs. But then more cards are coming out. And you're trying to get rid of all, as many as you possibly can. It's a fast-paced, tension-filled game that is just a lot of fun, and it comes in a pretty small package, I think. So that is Fuse. Also a cool name. It is. Um, my pick, my next pick here is Zany Penguins, a game in which you are Whoa! playing penguins Wait, who are trying to take that. over the world. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this one comes in a tiny little tin. It's a little square tin. And the game is extremely fast. It has some simultaneous play. But it's got a little bit more going on than most uh, simultaneous play games. It's cutesy. It's got that theme that's going to appeal to the kids as well. But I think the adults are going to be able to play this as a quick filler and enjoy it as well. Simple, cute, a very attractive package. Zany Penguins. My next game is a game called Hero Realms. Now, it sounds Hero. very similar to Star Realms. That's basically because this is the fantasy version of Star Realms. It came out a while ago. And uh, it has a great group of artists that worked on the game. Uh, the, the gameplay is basically the same, but there are differences. You can also buy these character packs where each character starts with their own starting hand and they have their own little special abilities that only they can do on the course of their turns or throughout the course of the game. 
Uh, and but huh. basically, you're trying to score uh, uh, as many hits as possible on your opponent. Once you knock their hit health points down to zero, you've won the game. Uh, so it's a really cool back and forth, really neat implementation of the Star Realms uh, system, and uh, really liked it a lot. Hero Realms from White Wizard Games. All right, the Prisoner's Dilemma is a is a kind of a thing where. Z and I are both picking something and we can agree and both get a little bit. We can disagree and one of us gets everything or mm -hmm. both of us can get nothing. This was made into a small card game, which I find very enjoyable, called HMS Dolores. And I think, uh, what's the theme here? Like splitting the loot of the... Your uh, uh, ship like that's a... been wrecked and you are splitting the loot as it washes up on shore. Yes. Right, okay. So you're splitting up this loot and you're working together with different people at the table and you might be lying to them and it's a kind of a quick back and forth negotiation game that you will do over and over and over again but a very quick sort amount of time very very fun that's hms dolores i love those kinds of games where you are chucking some dice and then writing your own thing on a little piece of paper in front of you it's a genre that seems to have taken off lately and this is one of those la granja no siesta is the <laughs> dice well, game like version that of La Granja, right? And so in it, you are going to be rolling some dice, but then you draft those dice. It's not just roll and see what you got. You're rolling a pool of them, drafting them, marking down what you've acquired. You can go for several different things. You can build up the roof of your granja. You can uh, acquire animals. You can go on little expeditions. You are going to get little bonuses from the center of the table. There's quite a bit going on in it for it being, like I said, a piece of paper you are taking down some little notes on. But it's quick, it's fun, it's engaging, the whole thing moves along very quickly, and at the end of the game you see who did the best, and that person is going to win. Very much recommended if you enjoy that style of game, where you are sort of doing your own thing, no one messes with you, but you gotta draft the right dice. La Granja No Siesta is my pick. My pick is a very small game. It comes in basically a little tuck box of cards, and that is called the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction. Now, if you have played the Manhattan Project, it's basically a game where you are trying to build the bombs and test them and then uh, drop them eventually, but that's not really part of the game. You're really just trying to build the bombs and test them to make sure that they work and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Chain Reaction is a very condensed, uh, streamlined version of that same game. You're using yellow cake and uranium to uh, build the best bomb that you possibly can. Uh, they shouldn't cake. eat that stuff. No, nah, yeah, that's... You might start going. I might get superpowers. Mm, doubt it. Uh, um, if you survive, maybe. Uh, the But the whole aspect, if you liked Manhattan Project, uh, the theme that's there, but maybe it was just a little bit too long for you, something like that, Chain Reaction is right where you need to look. And it slips. This one I know for sure, unless you have a very small, minuscule stocking, this will fit in your stocking. <laughs> I promise. Not for those with dainty feet. No. <laughs> that's uh, Manhattan Project Chain Reaction. All right, looters. This is a game in which uh, it's time to get some loot from the dungeon. And in this game, you have these different characters that would go into a dungeon, different monsters and things. You play those in front of you, and each monster has a certain percentage. You roll dice to get loot, but you can also be like, I don't like your guy. I'm going to take him out so I can attack other people's looters. Not you, I wouldn't do to you, but to that other guy. Okay. Um, it's fast-paced, <laughs> silly fun, works well with families, kind of a very lighthearted, hey, let's go into the, the dungeon and get some treasure. Some fun pieces, some cute artwork, just back and forth. Eventually, one person's going to get enough loot, and then they win at the game called Loot Looters. Because, yes, Makes sense. it does. Do you like eating plums? I do! Great, that has nothing to do with this game. But I, it is called Plums. I've deceived! Plums is a trick-taking card game in which you are going to be making combinations of different fruits and then scoring those based on the cards you've been able to win throughout the game from your trick-taking hands. The game has three big stages and a deck for each of those stages. You do not shuffle the same deck. You actually use a new deck of cards for each. And again, quite simply, as you are playing, you're going to uh, throw a card in the middle. The highest number will simply get to draft a card from those that were thrown in. And let's say, you know, you played an orange. My card's not an orange, but it does win the hand. Well, I'll take the orange because I need it. That's the game. Score the most points. Try to get the best uh, combinations. And you walk away the winner in plums. Very much recommend it, especially if you like that, those classic feeling trick-taking card games. I really do like plums, though. All right. <laughs> Sorry, no plums. Can I get a plum in my stocking? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Put it in there now. It'll be nice and ready for you at Christmas. <laughs> 
Mm. It's cold by that point. Yeah, it's a, it's a prune. <laughs> All right, um, my last game for this uh, stocking stuffer section is a game called Three Wishes, and it's a very, it's almost a micro game where you are simply trying to uh, get three different kinds of wishes, a wish for yourself, a wish a for one piece, and a wish for somebody else. Uh, you can have and, a plum and, too. and so the first person to get those three kinds of wishes in front of them is the winner, as long as it scores the most points for them, because there are different combinations uh, that can, you know, this card will combo with this card to give you more points and so forth and so on. So uh, it's a really neat little thing where you can pick it, peek at other people's cards to see what they have and sometimes you can either swap uh, the different cards that you have and when you have the three uh, that you think are going to win you the game you can call the end of the game and then uh, you see who won. Uh, it's a really fast game. It plays in about 15 maybe 20 minutes tops and uh, it's very uh, fun. Um, I had a lot of great time with it. That's three wishes. All right. I do like this game a lot. It's just so few cards and so much involved in it. Yep. Welcome back to the dungeon is the last game here. Well, it's basically the same game as Welcome to the Dungeon, uh, but it's a standalone game or you can mix them. In this game, you're going to pick a character. Everyone is looking at that character, the princess, a ninja, a bard, or a necromancer, right? Very similar. And you put one of them in the middle and they have a bunch of equipment. And then you are drawing cards, all the players are, and putting these cards and either making this dungeon pile of monsters hard to get through, or uh, taking equipment away from that here on the middle of the table. Okay. And eventually you're going to go, ah, I'm out. And you'll pass because you don't think you can take that hero through that dungeon. Once everyone but one person has passed, that person has to go through the dungeon. And they're either going to succeed and get a point, two points, you win the game, or they're going to fail, in which they take a hit point, two hit points, you're out of the game. And lots of fun, lots of double thinking other people. Mm -hmm. Each hero has different equipment that might help them get through the, the dungeon, but you take it away. Silly fun. This one adds a little, there's a little bit more game in this one than there was to Welcome to the Dungeon, but just really cool. And they mix. If you already have one, you'll want to get the other. So that's Welcome Back to the Dungeon. Now, if you have a giant stocking, you can get all these games. What? But maybe you just know someone who you want to get one of these small games to. Um, if you have I, a particularly large stocking, you can go see our other lists as well. <laughs> one of those games on that, uh, in that stocking, you know, I'm talking like Giganto stocking here, but yeah, go check out our I'm other I'm sure lists. they make such a thing. At the end, we'll have links yes, to them. they do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, well, until next time, I'm Tom Vessel. Z Garcia, thanks for tuning in. Sam Healy, I'm never wearing this hat again. And a happy new year.